My name is Angela. My name is Nicole. And welcome to the Ominous Stitch Podcast. <laughs> a little bit of a voice crack there. Oh, oh welcome. <laughs> Hello, Stitchers. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another amazing episode of the Ominous Stitch Podcast. Huzzah. Yay. It is December. Woo. <laughs> is it snowing where you guys are? Oh, my gosh. It's not where we are. It's not where we are. <laughs> not yet. It may. It snowed last year. That's true. My Christmas cards that I'm sending this year, I'll have to show you. Well, you'll get one anyway. Yes. But, um, it's actually of the snow on the farm. It's Aww. my chicken coops that are covered in snow. I love it. It looks looks like it's like a stock photo oh, but I'm like that's my it's, farm it's, it's, it's all yours snowy. yeah that's awesome yeah it's so oh, cool I love that but yeah anyway anyway so, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited for this week's episode again I don't know what we're talking about surprise surprise I love the secrets it's Good. so much fun I know so I can't wait to find out what we're doing I think you're gonna today. like this one yeah you're gonna enjoy this okay one. okay good 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 yeah good. I'm excited <laughs> But before we dive into yes. the episode, what's got you in stitches this week, Nicole? I, th I think we've got a theme stitch this week, right? We do. Okay. So I'm all like excited. I take my car to get an oil change. Woo! You know, adulting. Yeah, oil change. <laughs> Woo! -hoo! Woo -hoo! And uh, I'm at a Valvoline, Valvoline, and and they're like, oh, look at your air filter. This is dirty. Do you want to replace it? Sure. Okay. Yeah. And oh, I was like, I need my tires rotated, and I need this, this, and this. So it's a lot. So I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, and they're fast, but I have a lot to do, and I'm just sitting there waiting, and they're making me do some things. And okay, long story short, I leave, <laughs> and I'm driving, and all of a sudden, when I, when I ramp up. Uh -huh. I hear my engine really loud. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my voice cracking so much today. She's got a cracky voice. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, yeah. And every time I accelerate, it gets loud. Oh my gosh. What did they get, do to your car? Exactly. And I was like, in my head, you know, when I'm sitting there thinking about it, I'm like looking around at the other cars. And it's funny, this one guy next to me, he's like making a big deal how much an oil change is. And I'm like, yeah, it's just an oil change. And, but I was like, you know, in the back of my head, like, what if you do leave and something's wrong? Yeah. And of course that happened to me. Oh, right? Nicole. So I called my, it into existence. I did. And I did. And I was so mad at myself. So I called my dad because my dad's like the best with cars. And he's like, take it back and I'm like well no I don't want to go I'm almost home and he's like you gotta take it back I'm like okay 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 yeah they messed up your car they messed up my car and he's like it could be a, a number of things and so I get home and I'm fuming to my husband and I don't know what to do and they close at seven and at six and he's like just go and I'll take care of the kids just go I'm like okay oh yeah nice Matt Way yes go. so I drive back but before I go I look at my phone I'm like to to see what it is and it's mm -hmm. like all these people are saying it's the air filter i'm like okay so the, it's probably the air filter uh-huh so i get to the the valvoline i was at i was like hey i was just here he's like oh yeah yeah it's like what's going on i'm like it's really loud and he pops the the trunk thing or the the, the hood, hood <laughs> trunk. i'm not in a mini cooper you're so good a, with cars <laughs> <laughs> i love cars so they pop the hood and he's and he, sure he's like oh sure enough he like recognizes it. it's the air filter oh so what pissed me off he's like Oh, so we buy these air filters and, and these new ones that they that we're getting are like a little thicker. And I'm like, then why are you guys putting them in like our cars? Like, why don't uh -huh. you get better air filters? It's like you got to jimmy it in or else it doesn't, you know, then you get that sound. I'm like, great. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I was so <laughs> bad. Were they able to like fix it? Oh, they it? fixed it. Yeah. Okay, good. They well, fixed so it. silver lining. Silver lining. They fixed it. But super annoying that you had to go yes, back. Yes, I had to go all fixed, the way so, back. Right, yeah. And they did so much to my car. And I was like, you guys, I know you're trying to hurry. And because that's the, you know, the yeah, name of the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you got to make sure you do it right. Yes. Yeah. And I hate it because I hate car problems with a passion. Like, yeah. I hate it's, they're it. scary. Yes. Because you because never know. You don't know. Exactly. Yeah. So he fixed it right away. And he's like, you can contact me. I was like, oh, my wife's car is the same way. And then I was like, why don't you guys look at my car? That way? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I was very nice. Yes. And I'm usually very nice to people. And he's like, just call us if it, anything happens. It shouldn't happen again. You're always like, very nice. To, like to a fault. You are <laughs> to very, a very nice. I'm too nice. But anyway, I was just so frustrated. Yeah. So I would it's be fixed. too. Air filter. So if you're out there and your car, you leave your oil change and it sounds different. It's, it's your, your air, air filter. filter. If you got to jimmy it. it in. You got to jimmy it in. <laughs> <sighs> so anyway, 
<laughs> so Angela, what's got you in stitches? Okay. So I had a moment drive. Let's see. I think it was Monday. And Kate, listen, because you, you can relate to this story because I told a story very similar to this. This happened to Kate, although mine wasn't as severe as Kate's. Oh, OK. So I'm driving down this highway that I have that's like right by my house. And okay. I tend to go really fast on that highway because you kind of can. <laughs> You really can. And it's next to your home and you're comfortable. Yeah. And it's, and it's a straight away. It's two lanes and you know, you can see for days, whatever. So I'm, you know, chugging along. Was it day or night? It was day. I was going to pick up my kid from school because one of my children called and she was like, mom, I'm sick. And so I had to go uh, pick her up. We had that same situation. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to go pick her up. (laughs) Tis the season. Everyone has the the cold. (laughs) Everything. Yep. So I was on my way to go pick her up and I was in a hurry because I wanted to get to her. I didn't want her to sit in the office for yeah. too long. Yeah. And this um, landscaper truck pulls out in front of me and they go slow. No. I hate that, That's right? So it's a huge pet peeve when you're trying to go somewhere and you're, of there's course. nobody in front of you. There's nobody in the lane next to me and I'm just going. And he pulls out and they right pull in, front of you. in front of me. And so I'm like, and okay. And he doesn't see you're going super fast, obviously. Right. And so mm. I'm like, Okay, well, since nobody's in the lane next to me, I'll just go around. So I go into the lane next to me. As soon as I do, I hear this big crash (gasps) and I look behind me and like a big piece of landscaping equipment flew out of the back of the truck. It would have hit me if I didn't move. You kidding me? Right? Right? You kidding me? (laughs) I'm not. Whoa. I was like, holy God crap and I'm sure I said something other than crap <laughs> I would but, have been saying a lot more than that right oh so you avoided a whole big I avoided accident. death oh my gosh <laughs> yeah yeah I would have been it, I don't but I you don't, have a very strong intuition too so yeah it was probably a big combination of that it's like and you in a hurry yeah and it's I, like, I, yeah, I'm just like, I'm getting out of here. Yeah. And as soon as I did, it flew I'm out. I'm like, so glad that you're okay. Me too. Oh my gosh. That's so scary. <laughs> Got my heart racing. Yes. I immediately texted my husband. I was like, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. It was scary, man. I can't believe. Oh, oh. I would have been like my meta- my my metabolism. I can't talk today. My adrenaline yeah, would have been, been like so off the chart that yeah. I probably would have crashed that night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like you don't know what to do with that. Yeah. Yeah. It, Did it they was... stop? No, they didn't stop. They just kept going. I'm like, how do you not know you that something flew me? out of the back of your truck? I would have honked. I would have been like, dude, like your yeah, stuff's yeah. off of the truck. Yeah. I I probably should have, but, uh, but I wasn't oh, thinking that. I oh, was just like, oh. well, you're thinking I'm still alive. I'm so. still alive. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm thinking I'm still alive, and I'm like, okay, when is what is the movie Final Destination? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you wake up and you're like, oh, totally didn't even leave the house. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. So yeah, that was my. Uh, I'm glad you're okay. for this week. So I really wanted to tell that story, but I was also telling you about my stupid chickens. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to just briefly tell you guys. Let's do a lighthearted story. Just, yeah, <laughs> about my stupid chickens. Stupid chickens. Yesterday, I was in tears when we were putting the chickens away because we let them roam around the farm. You guys know this. We let them roam around the farm during the day. And we recently have had that bobcat incident uh-huh. that wiped out half of our flock. Right. So we have 14 chickens. Aww. And, you know, we're putting them away and we get 10 of them. They're really good. At nighttime, they actually come and gather in front of our garage. And so all we have to do is walk out and then they just follow <laughs> us into their coop. Okay. Like they're trained. They know. They know. That's we awesome. We have these four obstinate chickens that believe that they live in my, I have this big massive pepper tree in my backyard. Uh-huh. They believe they live in this massive pepper tree. <laughs> it's like that's their home. Yes. So when. Do they, they can't fly. So how did they get up? They climb. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They climb. How do they? They climb and jump and they get up to the very top. I'm so, so confused. They used to get up just a little bit, but we, we just trimmed it. So there's mm. not a lot of, if you guys know, pepper trees are really messy. They get all these like sucker limbs that grow oh. everywhere. And so you have to go trim those off constantly. Oh, so they're, they're like, hop, they were hiding. Yeah, in. they were hiding in all of those little things, but uh. we cut them all off. So now it looks like a beautiful tree, uh-huh. but they can't hide in those suckers. So they have to climb up to the top. And, and that's so where they're going. That's what they're doing. They're going up Chickens. to the top. And we didn't see them last night. So I'm bawling oh, because I'm like, hey, we no. lost four more chickens and now we only have 10. And yeah. what's going on with my chickens? They're never allowed out again. And I'm like <laughs> so upset and crying. Oh. 
And then we go out this morning to let our little tin chickens, you know, feed them. And I'm like, we're oh, going to so keep them locked up. Oh, so you never saw them all night? Never saw them. Okay. And they're like hanging out with the alpacas. Those four <laughs> stupid chickens are hanging out with the alpacas. They like got, got up away. super high in the pepper tree and we couldn't see them. How do they just get so back dumb. down? So I'm like, okay, I have wild chickens. They, cl <laughs> they climb down or they jump, but they think they live in the pepper. Like they can glide. They can right, flap and right. glide down and not hurt okay, themselves. Okay, so they're yeah. fine. I don't know when they came out of the tree. They were just hanging out with the alpacas this morning when we came What's out. What's up? I'm just like, you stupid chickens. <laughs> How was your chickens. night? We I'm had like, so much fun. You <laughs> had me so upset. Aww. And so I've started calling them the four horsemen because they're just, they're so dumb. <laughs> And, and I was like so mad at them and they're just like, what? We're like, whatever. I'm a chicken. Dang it, chicken. <laughs> That's so annoying. I'm sorry. I'm glad they're okay though. I'm glad they're okay. It could, it could I have think been worse. they're just going to be, that's, that's wild, they live in, chickens. wild chickens that live in my pepper tree. I think that's what they're going to do from now on because they've done it many times in a row now, but we've always been able to get them out. Uh-huh. But now they're way too high. We can't I'm get them. I'm trying to think of, you know, 12 days of Christmas. <laughs> Four wild chickens. <laughs> <laughs> I can put that on there. And it's stupid because we have a, a beautiful snowy barn owl that also lives in that pepper tree. Oh, wow. And I'm like, you guys are dumb. Why are you hanging out with the owl? Because it's going to eat you. <laughs> <laughs> But Maybe they're friends. I don't know. Who I knows? guess. I don't know, man. I'm but those sorry. stupid chickens. I'm sorry they stressed you out. Does anybody else have an issue with chickens <laughs> that want to live in the trees? Oh, my gosh. Just First, they yeah, would, like, lay you. eggs in the trees, and now they're, like, oh, living no. in the trees. <laughs> like, you're not that kind of a bird. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> Maybe in their past lives. Oh, man. Maybe. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> gosh. I felt so dumb this morning, too. I'm like, of course they're fine. Of course they're but fine. But you never know because you've had so many wild animals on your farm. So yeah. Yeah. It's hard to tell. It's crazy farm life. Whoop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag. Hashtag crazy farm life. Okay. I am so excited to yeah, get into this episode. I'm so excited. I know. I me just, too. I don't, you don't even have it up. So I, know, I still don't know what I'm it is. I'm hiding it because <laughs> I'm so excited. I, found, I was like, it came to me as an epiphany and I was like, oh. <gasps> This would be perfect and you're going to love it. So, okay. I'm so yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait. Okay. So, but before we dive in to story time, we have some stitches that I want to do. This I is, know. this is something, it has nothing to do with Christmas. It's actually care. very springy, <laughs> but it's something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Yay. And, and I have this present that I'm going to be giving to one of our patrons ooh, ooh. and I you know wanted to do some appliques so I thought I would do these and maybe sew oh, them on oh that's a great idea yeah so that's what brought this good job to my forefront okay but anyway should we get stitching yes let's get stitching <laughs> Okay, stitchers. So for this week's stitch, I'm going to do this little puff flower applique. It's so thing. cute. They're just little puff stitch flowers. They are the simplest thing to do. Yay. I whipped these three out while I was waiting for you to show up today. <laughs> <laughs> Because I was like, okay. Might as well. Might as well. Oh, they're adorable. And they're just, they're cute. And they're so simple. They look tight. Too. And it's, it's not a, like. Oh, yeah. And it, yeah. they're, they're, they can be kind of tight to stitch. Uh -oh. But so we'll, we'll talk about how to do them. And it takes like no time at all, which Ooh. is a good thing because you'll need to do a lot of these for different applications that you might do with them like I've seen an entire blanket made out of these Aww. and they just stitch them together kind well, of that like would take that forever. right and you have so pretty. many of them yeah. or you can make a mat out of them because yeah. they're nice and thick because they're puff stitches but they're these cute little I wanted to say daisies but they're just little oh, flowers little flowers little flowers I love it and there are many ways to do these but I found this well I'm gonna say I found it on spruce gifts but I just read how to do it very briefly mm. a few days ago. Oh. And so I this is all from memory. So Look if I'm not you. doing it exactly the way that they did it, then 
I'm going to say it's inspired by there Spruce. There you go. That's the artist in you. You're like, I'm just going to do what I inspired need to do. Inspired by Bruce. I'm there like, you go. I'm like, oh, okay. I think I know. I think I know what, what they were doing. So okay. basically you start with a magic ring. Okay. Yay, my favorite. Did you get good at it now? I'm getting good at it. So I figured out what I'm doing. So when, you know, when you do a magic ring, you make an X on your hand. Uh -huh. I was flipping them backwards. I was going to say that was probably the way because yeah, yeah you have to have those two in front of you versus the back. Right? Yeah, yeah yeah well I was and I was putting the wrong string in front oh, or I was trying to yarn over with the wrong string and so it wouldn't, it. wouldn't magic take. ring it wouldn't you yeah. know, pull and cinch and circle and I figured out I'm like oh I'm doing that backwards uh, that's why so I'm getting good. much better at magic ring Yay. I'm challenging myself to do it good I'm getting for you. better at it <sighs> okay so magic ring you start with a magic ring and then you're going to single crochet six into the ring okay got it standard pull the ring tight okay i suggest you do those six very loose because you're oh. going to be doing a lot into them oh okay okay and you don't have to pull the circle tight yet it will loosen as you're making the petals because mm -hmm. You do so much. so much into the okay. pedal. So don't worry about it being super tight. You can tighten it when you're done with the pedal. Okay. okay. So you do six uh, single crochets into the magic circle and then fasten it off. You're done with that initial color. So okay. I chose white because I, I tried to do this with. Okay. Another thing. I tried to do this with like a, a thinner yarn because it was this really pretty light buttery yellow. Uh -huh. and I'm like, oh, it's so pretty, but it's baby yarn. So it's very, very thin. Right. And I'm like, whoa, that doesn't work. You Does can't do that. Yeah. So I used a nice, um, I think I used a chunky yarn and it's white for my center for Did my flower. Like size, but it still looks like a size four. It's a uh, it's, maybe it's a little chunky, so okay. it's a little bigger than a size four. So okay. this is a size four. Uh, this is like a size five. Okay. So it's just slight, slightly A little chunkier. bigger so you can hold on to it better. Yeah, okay. yeah. So that's what I did. Um, and, you know, do whatever works for you. I did use a size four and a half hook for, okay. for this. So smaller hook. Um, and obviously, if you want to use bigger hooks, you're going to make bigger flowers. So... You guys know how that works. You know how size works. <laughs> <laughs> bigger okay. the bigger. So once you have your six single crochets into your magic ring, you're going to pick your flower petal color. And into each stitch, this is what you do. So you're going to attach your petal color, and then you're going to chain three. Okay. Then you're going to do a puff stitch with five. Five. So that's going to wind. So when you're doing a puff stitch, you yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. Right. You pull it to the height of that chain three that you just did. So that's kind of your gauge. So you know how big your pedal is going to be. Nice. Okay. And you do that five times. So that means you're going to have 10 loops that's on your so hook. so many. Right. Okay. And then you're going to yarn over, pull through all 10, mm -hmm. chain three, and slip stitch that back into that same because you're uh, saying crochet yeah, yeah. Got and it. that makes a petal so it's going to be a chain three with a five with a puff stitch of five mm -hmm. and then another chain three that kind of connects back to it yeah and you slip stitch that together so that mm -hmm. makes a petal and then you slip stitch into the next stitch chain three mm -hmm. five puff stitch chain three slip nice. stitch back into the same thing and that's your petal and oh. then you go all the way around all six all six that's and then so that's cute. it and it's I like that simple. the back of it looks, it looks like a flower. Yeah, it looks like a flower. It's very thicker. puffy, yeah. very puffy. And you can kind it's of play adorable. with it if you want to put your chains to the back. Yeah. You can do that because right my chains I kind of it. go to the front because of the way that I stitched it. <laughs> I'm a tight stitcher. But you can move the chains to the back. And then if you want to attach them, you have all these beautiful chains that you can connect into right. to sew them all together. Yeah. Yeah, so that I makes it a lot it. easier to it's do that. It's so cute. Yeah, so these nice little flowers. It's a very springy thing. I chose very springy colors, too. So I have a <laughs> light purple, spring. a light blue, and a light pink. I'm trying to make it warmer in my house because my house is famously cold. <laughs> <laughs> think, think warm. I do. I have this little space heater going Isn't to keep us warm today. Isn't it funny how we were, like, so hot just, like, a couple I know, months we were ago? Kind of, <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking about that because we, we were doing an like episode dying. and we're like, it's so hot. I can't wait for it to be cold. And then we're like, we know it's that when cold. it's going to be cold, we're going to be complaining <laughs> about it being too cold. I'd rather it be too cold. I would too. Yeah. Cause you can always add. I love more. layering. Yeah. I love blankets. I love layering yes. too. I love being all warm and cozy yes. and, and lighting a fire. Yes. We've already had a few fires this 
um, this past week Yay. or two. And we've been getting some rain mm-hmm. and it's getting colder. So I it's love it. Nice. Yeah. It's my favorite. My favorite too. I love but it. But you can still think it's spring. And you, I mean, you can always get ready for it. You never know. So yeah, get I ready it. for it because I'm always so far behind <laughs> in my crochet. I always have all these things that I want to do. And then I'm so far behind in everything. But, you know, such is life. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Being a mom, generally. <laughs> Speaking of so far behind, we will mail some. I have some, like, <laughs> patron She's things. She's behind. I'm behind on mailing patron things. So sorry. Angela had to help me take over because I usually mail things. Yeah. And she's so good at it. And I'm like, and then, not. <laughs> no, you just got a lot going on. And then she, it's been delayed. So we're sorry. Sorry, Brittany. Yeah. You'll get it. By the time you hear this, you'll get By it. By the time I'm you, sure. ha- yeah, you'll already have it. So but, we're sorry. But that's okay because it's like right in time for the season. So you will be getting it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get another package soon. Yeah. Because you're one It'll of our like bigger two patrons. two at the same time. It'll be good. It'll be awesome. Yay. So. All right. So are we ready for story time? I'm so ready. I am so ready. Yay. What is happening? I'll tell you soon. Okay. It's story time. Okay, I'm ready. So I have guesses on what we're doing based on the movie that we watched. No, but I told you. It has nothing you, to do with the movie. nothing to do with the movie. <gasps> okay, then I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I figured because it's the holiday season. It's the holiday season. And we're all out and about, right? Yeah. I looked up haunted shops. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so what we're going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about certain places that are haunted that you can shop at, but then I'm also going to intersperse personal stories of people. <gasps> yes. That I work love at the shops. personal stories. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Okay. I'm so, gonna love this. I'm so excited. So I got to show Angela and I'm going to link this on our website, but um, the first inspiration though, for this, besides being the holidays was, on TikTok, I watched this lady who works at an old Navy and she swears her shop is haunted. So she's always in the back, like uh-huh. filming and uh-huh. things fall off the shelves <gasps> on their own and there's sounds and things. Yeah. And she's always filming. And I'm like, yeah. oh my God. But there's this one that came up this week that I have to show Angela. So this is in Mexico and it's, a, it's at a grocery store and it's a security guard. And he swears he sees stuff at night, but uh-huh. he never gets it on film uh-huh. until now. <gasps> So I'm going to show it real quick. And I, like I said, I'll link it and then I'm going to jump in. So okay. hold on. Okay. I'm excited. <gasps> There's a person walking. There's a person walking. There's a person walking. Oh, that was crazy. It's going to slow down. It's gonna see it. sure, oh, just... that's so cool. So he's alone. He's absolutely alone. And he sees this person. He's like, there's a person. All... Yeah. He said persona. That was yep. person in Spanish. All I know a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, you do. Oh, it just disappears. Yeah. <gasps> oh, yeah. <woo>. <laughs> that's so cool. Nicole. Isn't okay. Crazy? You guys, you have to watch this video. So there's a little figure of, it's a person. It's, it's a person. like a shadow person. Cause it's all black uh-huh. that comes walking down the aisle a little bit and then they move away. And then it and then he turns around and points at it. Yeah. And then it's there and you see it just standing there yes. and then it fades away and yeah. disappears. Oh, <gasps> that's so good. Isn't that crazy? That's so good. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yay. All right. So, oh, have you ever been into a, a store that you felt was haunted or did you see anything? Or? So I have worked somewhere that has a haunted object. Ooh. So when I was growing up in Houston, whoop, whoop, I worked at a, a place called Space Center Houston. Oh, so cool. it's it's kind of like the museum that Disney helped put together for the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Nice. And so I worked there and it was really fun. We'd wear like, you know, flight suits and people would be like, oh, are you an astronaut? And you're like, oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> Maybe. But yeah, I'm like, I run the IMAX theater. Yay. <laughs> But we had a spacesuit for one of the astronauts that died in the Challenger explosion. Oh, wow. And we had it in a sealed glass case. There's no air. There's no anything. It's preserved and sealed. Mm-hmm. And it's Judy Resnick. She had some, um, we have, there's pencils that are in her flight suit. Mm-hmm. And every once in a while, the pencils will pop out. <gasps> And there's no Spooky. air. It's completely sealed, completely air, tra- 
airtight. There's no reason for why any why the out. pencils would pop oh, out. That's crazy. So it's always at night. It was always kind of like how do you get there. them back in? If it's airtight and everything. They have to take the case off. They have oh, to geez. unscrew everything and, and pull the case off to put the pencils back in. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I never saw it happen, but that was always Dang like it. the story. Yeah. And so I'd always go over there and look and see if the pencils move. <laughs> but, um, Sit there and watch. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the story. That's and it cool. was very like everybody knows. They're like, yeah, it's haunted. She still comes and hangs out in her spacesuit. And the pencils fly out every once in a while. That's spooky. Yeah. But that's fun. It was fun. It was okay. it was a, it was a good story. Good. Um, any other places that I've been that I think are haunted? Maybe I think. Let's see shops. I don't know. I think maybe my library in college. There was a corner that I didn't like to go into because it always felt very spooky ominous yeah and i don't know why but like i feel like libraries would and i don't i don't know if it's because of ghostbusters (laughs) but i feel like libraries would be very haunted because books have a lot of story and mystery dude yeah we should do haunted libraries should be an episode that we do we'll have to do that sometime but you're you're like hit in the nose because one of my shops uh-huh is a bookstore is a bookstore see mm-hmm. it makes sense because there's so much life and stories in books especially if it's like a resale shop because mm-hmm. those books have lived places exactly yeah any resale shop i think would have some haunted objects in it yeah and we gotta go check the goodwills now yeah 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 <laughs> well today i'm gonna start with my hometown we're gonna go to pike place market <gasps> I've been there. I think anybody who's gone to the, Seattle. Yeah, you, <laughs> if you've been to it's Seattle, place you gotta, to go. it's where they throw the fish. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So as I mentioned, it's in Seattle, Washington. And Pike Place is one of those iconic places you got to visit, right? Because you've yes, been there. Absolutely. I've been there. Everybody's been there. Yep. But it's a fun outdoor and indoor market with so many fun shops, tons of fresh flowers, delicious food. I have to mention that my favorite stop is Beecher's Cheese. <laughs> my last visit i got a grilled cheese sandwich and tomato soup and it oh, was so good that sounds amazing yeah i oh my gosh i'm like grabbing <laughs> nicole best. right now i'm like i so want that and just like angela said there's the famous corner where they throw the fish yep now the market opened august 17th 1907 where residents were eager to purchase reasonably priced fresh food Throughout the years, the market expanded and thrived, and even in the 60s, when some of the buildings were slated for demolition, the building was voted to have a rehab to update the older structures. But supposedly in the thralls of crowds, there are those that are not among the living. So in 2007, the Seattle Times published an article about all the ghosts that haunt the market. And just to mention, because we did, um, I talked about, remember Kel's, Irish restaurant and pub. Yes. Yes. That's in Seattle. It's right around the corner in Pike Place Market. Oh. And of course, that has tons of ghosts. And yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Really that was spooky. a good that was a good story. Yes. But other than that, there is the bead zone located in the bottom area of the market. Here, the co-owner Nina Menon watched as a large strand of red beads that was securely hanging on the wall came crashing down. Ooh. Didn't slide. And it flew down. <gasps> and Menon said, I was a healthy skeptic, but seeing was believing. There was no way these beads could have just slid off. It is said a small boy haunts this shop. At one point when the shop was under renovations, they discovered a basket of beads in a wall that had not been accessed for many years Ooh. before the store was opened. Ooh. So they believe that this little boy was hoarding the beads in the wall to play oh. with. <laughs> just stealing them oh that's good right at night the cash register drawer will open and close on its own oh that's scary not cool (laughs) and apparently it is believed that the same little spirit visits the marionettes in the puppet shop oh don't go to a puppet shop i don't want to go there (laughs) that's scary in itself right yeah (laughs) oh my goodness now then there's the ghostly apparition named frank a tall and elderly ghost who stands outside a club called uh, the alibi room off post alley he introduces himself to people walking by oh that's cool he's a friendly ghost i want to go meet him (laughs) Frank, Hi, the friendly Frank. ghost, the friendliest ghost you know. <laughs> I'm oh, Frank. <laughs> I'm Frank. Hi. <laughs> now, the most famous haunt is that of Princess Angeline, eldest daughter of Chief Seattle. <gasps> 
Hi. There's a picture. I have a picture of her. Yeah. Her Duwamish name was Kiki Soblu, but the early settlers of Seattle had named her Princess. When the 1855 Treaty of Point Elliot caused all the Duwamish Indians to leave their lands for reservations, Princess Angeline chose to ignore the order and remained in the city. <laughs> good for her. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to leave. No. Good for her. So she lived in the, the waterfront cabin on Western Avenue between Pike and Pine Streets, and she made a living by taking in laundry and selling hand-woven baskets. She was often seen with a red handkerchief over her head, shawl around her shoulders, and using a cane to walk around. And she was a familiar sight along the Seattle waterfront. Princess Angeline passed away on May 31st, 1896, and she was highly respected by many during her funeral and burial. So Good. Oh, that I like that. I'm glad. Yeah. No, I'm she glad she stood her ground oh, and yeah. people like appreciated her yes, and, and respected her. That's good. Yeah. Oh. But after death, she's still spotted hanging around Pike Place Market as the market was built on the site of her former cabin. Ah. Oh. So most that see her believe she's a living human being until she vanishes <gasps> in front of their eyes. Oh, she's that like she's that corporeal. Yes. Oh, that's so cool. Yes. Her spirit is said to move extremely slowly as she did in her later years in life and that her feet hover above the ground. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> Princess. Yeah. Some report to see her change colors from a glowing white shade to lavender and blue to pink. Ooh. Yeah, she's very colorful. She is often seen near a rough wooden column in the center of the lower level. When people walk by this particular column, some will report it is surrounded by extremely cold air, and some have displayed some strange abnormalities that couldn't be explained in their photographs. <gasps> she's taking pictures. Yeah, she's Aww. down there. She's saying hi. Then we have Arthur Goodwin, nephew of the original Pike Place Market developer, Frank Goodwin. Arthur held the job of market director from 1918 to 1941, and his office was located on the upper level of the market where he could look down at the bustle. His office was changed into a meeting room within the now Goodwin Library. And when you look up, sometimes you will spot Arthur's silhouette looking down at you. <gasps> and Arthur. Sometimes he's even swinging a golf club. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I guess he liked to do. That's awesome. Yeah. Then you have Sheila's Magic Shop Ghost. Ooh. This is crazy. Okay. It's haunted by a woman who inhabits a crystal ball. <gasps> oh, <laughs> Madame Leona. That's awesome. <laughs> they call her Madame Nora. And it is said she originally haunted the Pharaoh's treasure shop before making Sheila's her home. So legendsofamerica.com explains that Pharaoh's treasure received the crystal ball from an old woman who wanted to trade it for a scarab. Though the old woman warned the shop owner that the spirit of Madame Nora was re residing in the crystal ball, the owner thought little of it and made the trade. <laughs> Almost immediately, unexplainable things began to happen, most notably numerous objects being moved during the night. Madame Nora is said to have been a woman who ran a place called the Temple of Destiny in the early days of the market. She is known to have practiced crystal gazing, Egyptian sand divining, and Indian psychic projection. She continues to leave her paranormal imprint today. Weary with the strange occurrences in Pharaoh's treasure, the crystal ball was passed on to Sheila's magic shop owner. <laughs> So she's hanging out there. It. I love it. It's awesome, right? That's awesome. Lastly, at the Shakespeare and Co. bookstore, every morning the owners would go to open the shop and find a book off the shelf and on the floor. But <laughs> every single morning after putting the book back, the same book was found on the floor. Oh, that's good. They decided to destroy the book. <gasps> They destroyed a book. Yeah, they got like, so annoyed with having so to mad. put the book back yes. that they destroyed a book. Yes. Oh my gosh. They're like, nope, I don't want to deal with this anymore. I would just leave the book out. On the floor? Yeah, just leave it on the floor. Like, just leave put it a out. Little box around it. Yeah. I would like, yeah, enshrine the book. Yeah. Be like, this is the book that lives on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Please do not touch. Okay. <laughs> Now, uh, there is, I, that was a little bit of a bookstore. There is a bigger one later. Oh, okay. Good, 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 good. So this is, now I'm, now I'm going to intersperse them, like I said. So this is from Reddit. This is the Home Depot story. <laughs> Home Depot. You're nice. going to love all these. Huh? I'm so excited. So the other morning, I was with a coworker on the middle aisle. This was right before the store opened, so there wasn't anyone around. 
We noticed a balloon that was stuck on the ceiling had fallen down Ah. and was floating about a foot off the ground. (laughs) The balloon then started to move down the middle aisle from aisle nine to aisle six, where it turned the corner and moved down aisle six all by itself. It was kind of creepy, and when we told another coworker, he said it was probably the ghost of the little girl that is in our store. Oh, <laughs> oh well, okay, duh. yeah, nonchalant. <laughs> so after asking around, I found out she likes to hang out in our electrical room next to receiving. One of my coworkers said that when he used to close, he would hear someone run down the next aisle after the store was closed, and no one was there. Apparently, some people have actually seen a little girl in the store after clothes, and they thought some kid was lost in the store. So I asked the overnight ASM who has been there for seven years, and he told me while he's never seen her, one time when the store was closed for Thanksgiving, the store was all locked up and no one was there. The receiving door flew open by itself in the middle of the night, setting off the alarm. Oh. As for myself, sometimes stuff will fall off the shelf all by itself when there was no reason it should have. A few times I thought I heard someone call my name and no one was around. Oh, I hate that happens to me all of the time. That's not cool. That shouldn't happen to you all the time. <laughs> like all the no. time. It happened a lot when I was little and growing up I would hear somebody go Angela all the time and I'd be like what what yeah the, that's not cool never Angela. anybody there no but I don't yeah. like that it hasn't happened in a long time good yeah still not cool all the time when I was growing <laughs> I up I don't like that <laughs> I don't like it all right as I mentioned we're going to go to Detroit and we're going to go to John K. King used and rare books. <gasps> it's the bookstore. Oh, that's cute. It's, it's got a little hand. Huge. It's massive. It was what, what, four or five stories? It's four stories. Oh, wow. Yeah. Rated one of the top bookstores in the world by Business Insider, CNN, and many others, John K. King used in rare books in Detroit is definitely a must visit as a bibliophile. The current location is actually the third site of the bookstore. The original was established by John K. King in 1965. It moved to the Michigan Theater in downtown Detroit in 1971. Then in 1983, made its final move to the abandoned Advanced Glove Factory. (laughs) Advanced Glove. Advanced Glove. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Here, there are four stories that hold over a million books that contain so many different types, from signed copies of Ernest Hemingway novels to illuminated medieval manuscripts written on vellum to books bound in crushed Moroccan leather to woodcuts on China paper, (gasps) etc. Cool. That's a lot. I want to go. That sounds so cool. Yes. But does the large warehouse hold spirits of the dead? Yes. The store owner (laughs) believed it did at one time. So decades ago, mysterious things started happening as soon as items that belonged to a woman who committed suicide were brought to the store. Oh, yeah. As you said. Attachment. Yes. They were housed on the third floor, and here the lights would go haywire, turning on and off all by themselves. Workers even reported hearing doors slam and hearing phantom footsteps. Owner King claims that he noticed the activity died down as soon as the last of her materials were moved out of the building, but he's not 100% sure the spirit has moved on completely. When Trish Lidster, founder of Scientific Paranormal Investigations in Waterford, heard about the possibly haunted bookstore, she decided to bring some equipment and investigate the business herself. Accompanying her was a psychic she works with, and the psychic picked up a name who happened to be a guy who worked for the owner his office was in the basement and he had passed away about a decade ago oh so litster said she needed to do a little more investigating but felt that the store did have some activity but was focused on the basement Mm -hmm. beyond these people who visit do claim to feel someone watching them from all over the building as well as cold spots to seeing books move on their own. Ooh, I like the moving books on their own. Right? <laughs> it's, it's Ghostbusters. It's Ghostbusters, yeah. <laughs> That's spooky. <laughs> See the librarian come and shh. Yeah. <laughs> I would run. I would run so fast. No. All right. Story time. Haunted CVS. <laughs> These are all places I'm sure everybody has been. This is That's awesome. so fun. Okay. Okay. I am convinced my store is haunted. We are located in a very rural town, one of the only remaining chain stores on the main road of the town, right next to a cemetery. Oh, we'll see. Yeah, cemetery. Okay. Bringing in that spirits. 
So I closed the store today, just me and a cashier. For a few hours before we closed at 10, the phones in both the front checkout and office kept ringing as a call from the break room. No response on the other end. The store radio every 30 minutes or so cut out to static and crackling noises correcting itself after a couple seconds. We were joking around saying how the store is possessed. Well, not even an hour after closing, I saw a missed call from an unsaved number followed by a text from the SM saying Alarm Central called her saying the stockroom motion detector was triggered. She asked me if I was sure I locked the doors, which I know I did. About 15 minutes go by and she calls me with a horrified sound to her voice. She told me one of the red overstock carts for vitamins was completely knocked over onto its side Whoa. with a disaster of vitamin bottles scattered throughout the store. Oh. How does this even happen? You would have to lift from the bottom to knock those rolling carts over. I'm absolutely horrified to go back and I have to open tomorrow. Anyone have advice or can think of what possibly has the potential to knock over a rolling cart? It seems impossible to me. Never had any weird experience in, in my three years at this store until today. Oh, that's so good. That's, that's so good. I wouldn't want to go back. Would you? Uh, yeah. You'd have I, to. Yeah, well, I'd have to. But yeah, I'd, I'd want to go back because I'd be like, how did this happen? And then like try to figure it out on my own. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> I'd make sure someone cool. was with me. Ugh. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think there would be because usually yeah, it's not just one person at CBS. You're CBS. right. Yeah. You're right. So, so I would make them stay with me, though. Yeah. So. <laughs> like we go together. Yeah. <laughs> Here. Never leaving me. Yeah. Okay. This I'm, I never heard and I'm surprised I haven't. And I think that everybody should hear about this because this is crazy. Okay. 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 This excited. next retail space is located in Soho, New York. Okay. It's called a COS. Okay. Uh huh. It's a tragic story. So, <gasps> yeah, this COS, it's an H&M sister brand okay. on 129 Spring Street. Before the COS, it was the Manhattan Bistro Restaurant. And before this, a large old well stood, oh. which is still there <gasps> today. Oh, water, 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 people. Over 200 years old. And yes, oh. you may be thinking about morbid thoughts about this well, and you're probably not far oh, off. Oh, no. I was just thinking water holds memory. Thank you, Olaf. But oh no. gosh, the well is like in the store. It's, in the it's store. not it's not even like buried underneath nope. the it's it's for all to see. Oh wow. Okay, that's way creepy. Because I was thinking that it was, you know, the foundation was poured on top of the well, but it is not. There is a big stone well in the corner of the store. Yep. That is crazy. They let it go. Yep. Okay, oh. let me take you back to December 22nd, 1799, when lovely 21-year-old, oh, I forgot about this, Julielma, Gulielma, <laughs> I'm so bad with this, I'm so sorry, G-U-L-I-E-L-M-A. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not even going to help me. Oh, I'm going to be calling her Sands from now on anyway. Okay. So it's Julielma Elmore Sands, okay? She snuck out of her boarding house on Greenwich Street to meet her secret lover, Levi Weeks. They planned to elope that same evening, but then she vanished, and that was the last time she was ever seen alive. Oh, no. Then, on January 2nd, 1800, Sands' lifeless body was found in the well in oh. Lispenard's Meadow. Investigators found strangulation marks on her neck, and her lover, Weeks, was arrested and charged with homicide. Yep. The crime and trial was sensationalized by media, and the case was dubbed the Manhattan Well Murder. Sands' family was so infuriated, they probably did the wrong thing. They displayed Weeks' corpse outside their boarding home. Ooh! Yeah. Oh, not cool. no, 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 no. Don't we don't do don't do vengeance, people. Right? Vengeance doesn't help you. That doesn't That's, help. No, the community's rumors spread like wildfire with talks of weeks impregnating Sands, then murdering her. Hmm. This case is one of the most well-known murder trials because of two facts. One, it was the first major murder in America that was fully recorded by a court stenographer. Ooh. Second, because Weeks had a wealthy and affluent uncle, he hired the best legal representation for him at that time. Alexander Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton. And Aaron Burr. Ooh, both of them. Both of them. Whoa. Yeah, not cool, though. <laughs> <laughs> cool, but not cool. Okay, so Alexander Hamilton, of course, I have to sing that. Yes. Aaron Burr is forever my mouth full of peanut butter. <laughs> Aaron Burr. 
I can't Always. separate that. Always. Oh. Do, so, does anybody else have that issue? Is it just me? I think it's just you, but maybe not. <laughs> I don't know because I don't know. You know me. I don't watch musicals and I have never seen Alexander Hamilton still. So. Oh, okay. We'll have to watch it. I tried. I really you did. Can't, I can't, can't get watch through it. it. I'm it's sorry. It's rap. It's not even like, I, know, I mean, some of it's sung, but like. Period. Like, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I won't get into it. We're going to continue with the story. <laughs> so the popular defense team Clay Sands was suicidal and weeks was found not guilty no that's how good they were oh i hate them so see i mean it makes sense they are very good they're very good they're very smart that's why they hired them yeah oh. the public thought the, the the public was in an uproar obviously you and me are yeah. and even one of sans <laughs> relatives in court screamed at hamilton i call upon the almighty to curse you all and he will do it yeah okay yep. now i understand why Sans's family was like, we are going to display his lifeless body here because he... Oh, her, her lifeless body. Oh, they, they displayed her, her body. Her lifeless body. <gasps> oh, I thought it was his no, body. No, they took her oh, body. Oh, that's morbid. Morbid, yes. Oh, I don't like that. No. Oh, poor no. Little, yeah, poor girl. No, 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 yeah. no. That's not respectful for her. Exactly. Oh, Yeah, I'm they sorry. did that because they were like, look what happened to her. Let, let's charge him with you know murder but oh, it didn't happen yeah i'm gonna say julie Elma. <laughs> thank you i think that's sure right. i don't know i don't know sans is for me okay sans weeks had to flee town and he settled in mississippi because of the public well good <laughs> yeah. he's not there anymore but right but oh uh, most likely he got away with murder crawl yeah. that he's so oily yeah Mm. But poor Sands, her spirit was so unsettled and remained in the area seeking justice. Yeah. Over the 19th century, people swore her ter tormented spirit was seen and heard while the well was built on top of. So various businesses such as a tobacco addiction specialist, no. <laughs> a German beer hall, and a carpenter's shop were erected over the well. Mm -hmm. In American Magazine in 1895, they reported young men and maidens who passed the spot late at night testify they can hear her scream as she vainly implores her lover for her life. 1895. <sighs> that I feel was like 1800. So over that whole century, people are claiming they that can they hear can her. hear her. Well, I think I think the way that her family displayed her had more to do with then i mean i don't know but that's I don't her know. place of death like you said water the well the wa water holding, remembers water has been holding on to her spirit yeah nothing. thanks a lot <laughs> <laughs> so sands was dubbed the spring street ghost soon the well was covered over in more and hidden away until in the 1950s when the manhattan bistro was established the owners knew about the spring the spring street ghost as the staff would report strange happenings constantly but it wasn't until the 1980s when they decided to investigate in their basement. After digging through the concrete, dirt, and sand, they discovered the well. Mm -hmm. There it is. Mm -hmm. It looks the same in the COS. Yep. After discovered, patrons requested to visit the well constantly. And still, employees reported items that would spontaneously fly off tables and crash into walls. Bottles would fall off shelves on their own. And lights would turn on and off by themselves. One former employee told the New York Post in 2001, I've seen ashtrays just fly off the table and crash into the wall. Maybe Elma's ghost doesn't like smoking. Oh, the color Elma. Oh, yeah. there you go. Okay, Elma. Elma. Okay. In the basement near the well, workers reported seeing flying swirls of mist. Ooh. Even Sand's physical apparition was seen by both employees and patrons of the restaurant. She was described with long hair, sometimes wearing a long dress and other times covered in seaweed and water. Aww. The bistro closed in 2014 and the COS opened that December. COS communications director Amy Furs was quoted. We are incredibly proud to have restored the well and left it exposed on the shop floor for our customers to see and enjoy. <laughs> well, anything to bring in the people, right? Right? Yeah. yeah. Hey, come on while come you're shopping. On in. Maybe Check you'll see the, the ghost. Ha, yeah. ha, ha. So it's still there. <sighs> but I, that, I've never, never heard, heard this that case, story, right? No. With Alexander Hamilton. Like, oh, holy crap. A, and Aaron Burr and working Aaron Burr. together. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. So there you go. Wow. If you're in New York, go check it out. COS. Go to the COS on Spring Street. 129 Spring Street. Oh, that, that's a good story. Yes. I like that. I mean, I'm sorry, Elma. Right? And, um, I'm sorry that... Ugh, it's terrible. It's terrible, but yeah. man, 
I want to go to the well and just be like, Elma, I'm so I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. All right. Story time. Unknown shop. I used to work in a retail store. Ooh, my voice cracked. <laughs> <laughs> While working there, I've heard voices almost every manager had. I was the HR manager, so every time something happened, I was the first to know. One time, a new associate ran into my office. She said while she was using the bathroom, someone knocked on the stall door. She said, someone is in here. They knocked again, so she repeated herself. Then there was banging on the stall door. <laughs> Frustrated, she looked under the door and no one was there. No feet. <laughs> I had an experience one where it was just me and two other managers left at night. One was at the door and one was in the office with me. We had to walk through a partially dark area to get from the office to the entrance. As soon as we walked out the door, I see something swish by some clothing racks. I didn't say anything to my coworker, but she turned around and said, did you see that? Oh, I just started at the same yeah, time. I just started running to the door and she booked it too. <laughs> we get to the other, uh, the other manager and he asked what happened. So we told him what we had seen. He laughed at us and started to set the alarm. The alarm wouldn't set. It kept saying it detected movement right where we saw the clothes moving. Uh, this happened a few times. He finally yelled into the area that we were trying to leave and the alarm finally set. Uh, <laughs> you got to talk to him. <laughs> Too many experiences to write them all down. We would leave a voice recorder out at night and we'd hear drawers opening and closing. The sound of the keys on the register typing, loud bangs. One time we left it in the bathroom and heard the faucets turning on and off and heard growling. Ooh, I don't like the growling. Everything else just reminds me of just like somebody's hiding in there. and then Yeah, they're, playing around. Yeah, but some, somebody hid in there and then they're just sleeping in there that's like maybe like like the the woman who lived in that one guy's apartment oh. you know <laughs> oh, no. oh man spooky. free rent <laughs> yeah. okay so this is a picture of the diamond center mall yeah that's okay. it's a lot it's of huge. stories and it's an ice rink in the middle yes yeah. okay nice yeah okay. we're going to anchorage alaska <gasps> Ooh. yeah there are some pretty bizarre happenings in the diamond center mall now, all over the Internet, there are claims that there that when they were digging to build the mall, construction workers found a few graves and ignored it. Thus, mm. the mall is cursed. However, after doing a little more research, I believe the comments of those who chime in about how new Anchorage is. Oh, how new Anchorage is and that the land was permafrost. So there shouldn't be any graves. I believe that. Okay. Someone else chimed in that the land was purchased by Joe Ashlock after the oil boom and there was really nothing there. However, that same commenter mentioned there have been a lot of deaths to take place there, like a maintenance worker dying from a Freon leak, a woman having an aneurysm while mall walking, and even a shooting took place, which I'm going to mention more soon. Ooh. Just because it wasn't an ancient burial site doesn't mean this place is creepy and has some spooky stories. <laughs> so here are some that were given to hauntedplaces.org. Okay. I work at the Diamond Mall and in the hallway where the projectors are, my co-workers have claimed to have seen three different ghosts, a tall man, an old woman, and a child. Aww. These three, though, have been like I've tried to do more research. These three ghosts seem to pop up all the time. Oh, wow. People. Ooh, I got chills. Yeah. Ooh. Next, I have had an experience here at 11 p.m. or so by the old bathrooms. I heard yelping noises, but absolutely no one there. Weird. The car machine then proceeded to go crazy and it all turned on, so I ran for my life. LOL. <laughs> I don't know what the car machine is, but that's so spooky. Yeah. This one's fun. So I took my son to watch a movie this past Sunday, and we were on a little more than 30 minutes early for the movie. I haven't been to the theater and didn't know there were reclining seats, so I was a bit excited to experience this type of comfort in a movie theater for the first time with my son. Nobody was in there but us two. So I can I can relate to the reclining seat. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You're like, ooh, these are fancy. Like, when's the last time you've been to a movie, Angela? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was 2007. <laughs> I don't know. It was a long time. So I started taking pics. The first one I took was the one I attached. And I'm going to put this on the, on the webs. <gasps> I have an iPhone and it was set on live. So when I look back at the pics, there's movement as I'm taking it in the movement, a.k.a. live. LOL. I didn't notice anything until I got home and was going through my pics. That's when I saw three white orbs zipping in different directions <laughs> at the same moment I nice. snapped the pic. 
I believe it to be orbs as I've seen them before, but three at one time? Whoa. Unfortunately, you all can't see them in motion, but you can clearly see three streaks of light going in different derays. Forgot to add this picture with the other one. But as I explained, my picture settling was, or setting was less set on live. And apparently after I snapped this one and caught three orbs, I turned and caught this creepy looking thing. I'm going to show Woo! you. Angel. Again, we were the only ones in there. And I seriously didn't even know until it was about to write this post and was looking at the pic. And I already posted and spotted it. No idea what it could be. It's not a good pic either. I had to screenshot it. Okay. Okay. So this is the orb picture. Do you see the, like those little streaks? Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Got some streaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That. Can you see it? It's really dark. Yeah, there's something there. I mean, it's, I don't know. It's like a round, round head maybe? It's like a round head thing. And then is that part of it too? No, or is that, it's, it's just, just that? that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like, it's a round. And no one was in there. So it looks like maybe like a little kid sitting It in could be a head. It also kind of looks like maybe a hand yeah. doing a claw thing. Yeah, it does look like that too. Yeah. Ooh. Spooky. Spooky, spooky. Yeah. Okay. And lastly, night, this is not quite in the mall, but it's right across from it. So I, I counted it. The Diamond Center Hotel is in the parking lot of the Diamond Center Mall. I worked at the hotel for years and didn't believe the stories. One night, a drug deal went bad at the nearby Walmart. There was shooting as people ran through the mall hotel parking lot, and one round went through the wall into a meeting room. Meeting broke up and cops did their thing. Next day, I was cleaning up in the meeting room. A large gray wolf appeared in the front west end of the room. It growled. I left. I saw the wolf a few more times, always in the north wing where the meeting room was. I saw it on the first and third floor walking the hall. Others say they have seen it on the third floors, uh, on all three floors, and sometimes in guest rooms. So there's like just a wolf. I think it's a ghost wolf. It's a ghost wolf. But, oh, wow. Most often it is seen in or near the meeting space and fixture storage areas. I stopped working at the hotel a few <laughs> months later. <laughs> so I think it's a ghost wolf. Well, yeah, that's crazy. Spooky. It's, it's like an... somebody's spirit animal. I think so. <gasps> that's Spooky. so cool. You ready for this? I'm ready. Okay. Haunted Starbucks stories. <laughs> <Yes>! <laughs> I'm drinking my Starbucks right now. <laughs> I knew he'd like this Yay. one. Yay. I hope none of my partners sees this, but shit constantly gets thrown <laughs> off shelves at my store. <laughs> like effing beans, syrups, and <gasps> even pastry trays. Oh, no. I'll walk past the syrup shelf and a bottle will get thrown at me. And it wasn't even near the corner or edge. So there's no way it just fell. Yesterday, two empty pastry trays flew and it was the same thing. They weren't on the corner of the counter or anything. Matter of fact, none of us ever saw where it came from. Like, we didn't remember them ever being on the counter. My coworker even said she's seen water turn on by itself. I don't know this whole thing as creepy as F. And I'm terrified of ghosts, so I literally can't sleep, and I'm scared to go to work. Oh, no. It's a haunted Starbucks. <laughs> In response to this. Okay. My store is too. <laughs> <laughs> Avery, what do you got to say about I this? I know, right? Go check them out. Me and some of my other coworkers have literally seen people in our store and on the patio when no one is there. <laughs> <laughs> and the safe will literally start beeping by itself even when it hasn't been touched in hours. Oh, no. Yeah. They're and trying to steal your money. I know, right? <laughs> Last one of the Starbucks. Okay, so the one I remember the most was when my shift, another bar barista and I had just checked the bathrooms and cafe to make sure no one was in there and had locked the doors for the night. We were going about normal closing tasks and I looked up and immediately saw just someone. My shift comes up front and was talking to the person and asking them to leave since we were already closed. The other barista came up and asked how they even got in. I knew that there was no one in the cafe before we locked up and knew something was going on. I immediately told them to stop talking to the person. It never ends well when you talk to ghosts in the light. <laughs> I looked away for one minute to get my phone to call my fiance to come and sit with us and I look up and the person was just gone. <gasps> there have also been instances of everyone in the store seeing shadows of people in the back and on the patio when there literally are no customers. It was absolutely terrifying, but I need the money. <laughs> <laughs> ah! they're just there to keep you company yeah they're just they yeah. were like i kind of want coffee they're i just, just can't drink it out <laughs> <laughs> how pissed would you be if like a ghost ordered a coffee and, and you're then... like making it and then and then that's and then it they disappear. yeah they disappear and you're like damn oh, it i'll just drink this i guess <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah silver lining you're right like, okay cool i get a free coffee i get Yay. a free coffee <laughs>
All oh, right. that's good. It's fun, right? Yeah. Okay, I've got one more shop and then another story. Okay. This is GAC, or Guitar, Amp, and Keyboard Center. Ooh. I like this one. Yep. I'm here. Let's, uh, this is a photo of it. GAC. Nice. So we travel across the pond to GAC in Brighton, UK. Hi, Brighton. Last year, they celebrated their 30th birthday, and it is one of the UK's largest independent musical instrument reta retailers. The building is really cool as it's bright yellow and red, as Angela saw, but apparently it's going to be updated to celebrate the 30 years of service. The store brought a lot of attention to itself about four years ago when CCTV captured some strange uh, things. I'm going to link these on our website, but first good, one good, good, good. is of a customer standing in the shop at around 11 a.m. So it's, it's in the yeah, middle of the day. Yeah, in the middle of the day. When open. a ghostly apparition walks towards the gentleman without him even noticing. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm going to show you. Okay. Yeah, there's a guy in the corner standing there on a cell phone. Okay, there's a shadow that is moving towards him and then just walks past him and he and doesn't he's not even notice. notice. He's just looking at his phone. Oh, how weird. Didn't even realize. Nope. Oh, that's crazy, Nicole. Isn't that cool? <laughs> oh, it's behind him again. It Nobody sees it. There's two people there and they don't see it. Don't even see <gasps> it. Ooh, that's spooky. That's good. And then... So the other is at about 5 a.m. when the organized guitars hanging on the wall start to sway on their own. <laughs> and no, it's definitely not a breeze or someone walking by as no one is in the shop yet and the lights are all out. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's so weird because it's not it's all the like, guitars. It's just two it's guitars just that just kind of shimmy a little bit. One will shimmy and then a little bit later another one will shimmy. Oh, there's more. Mm -hmm. <gasps> What's happening? Oh, 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 something fell off the well, wall. That one's okay. I think that one's just like, it could happen. But, mm -hmm. but the swaying guitars. The swaying guitars. You guys, all these, there's a ton of guitars on the wall. Think like Guitar Center. Yes. Right? Ton of guitars on the wall. And then just like one in the middle just kind of goes shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. And then one, a few guitars down goes shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. <laughs> they just answer each other. It's so weird. It makes Sneaky. no sense. Doesn't it's make like sense. somebody's grabbing the guitar Someone's like they want to it. take it off. Yes. Yeah. And they can't get it off. Nope. And so they go to another one and try to take that one off and they can't get it off. Yep. Oh, that's so crazy, Nicole. Is that fun? I like that's that. Fun. That's good. Okay. Lastly. Okay. Who doesn't love Target? I love Target. <laughs> Target. It holds all the things. But your Target may have more than physical household uh, objects. Target has all of the clothing. things. Target is evil because you go to Target <laughs> for one thing. And, and you, you end up spending like 200 bucks. Yeah. You can't not... If, if I go to Target for one thing and I successfully accomplish that mission and just get one thing. Do you feel good? I feel so good because <laughs> that never happens. It never happens. Oh, my gosh. Because it's got everything you and you're like, oh, yeah, I do need this. And I have to stay away from all of the the home stuff, oh. you know, because <laughs> they're all cute. I love it so much. It's like so my style. Like it makes me sad because I want everything that Joanna Gaines has out there. Yeah. And I want everything. What's the other girl who um, lives in? See, I'm doing it again. I just, I, th there's another. All the Target home all stuff. All the Target home stuff. <laughs> Thank you. That's all you need. <laughs> it's so good. They both have TV shows on Netflix <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. You can watch. They're it's cute. so good. Yes. Yeah. So Target. It's evil, but yeah. it's also got <laughs> ghosts. some ghosts. Yay. So here are some stories from people who work at Target. Our store is haunted. We had a mobile team member that passed away from cancer. The whole mm. store loved him, and he is a legend in our store. In the back by the mobile cage, you'll hear footsteps when nobody's there, cold spots, etc. Before we closed down Food Ave 2, the soda machine would start and stop randomly with the oh. soda he used to drink. Oh, he's still there. He also used to be funny and wave the keys um, through the alarms near the front doors in a line from left to right. Sometimes for no reason now, the alarm will go, go off in the same order. Oh, he's, that's, he's there. This is sweet. Yes. I think this is so sweet. Because he loved Target. Yeah. Then there's the team members that have been at our store forever and were friends with him, like myself. I was also the last TM to visit him in the hospital the day before he passed. I'll feel cold spots, feel somebody poke my shoulder, and I'll turn around and nobody is there. <laughs> He's saying hi. Yep. Also, there's a shadow figure that moves all around the store. That's his height and body shape. Oh, he's there. His presence is comforting, though, like an old friend popping in to say hello and cause some silly havoc. 
I love that. Yeah. I would so love going to work because I'd be like, hey, buddy. <laughs> You're still around. Yay. That'd be fun. All right. I do domestics. I swear on my life. The section that we call A block, picture frames, candles, wall decor, etc. Yes. Your favorite area yes. Angela, has a ghost or a shadow person hanging around on it. Well, I would too. I would. <laughs> it smells so good and it's, it's just cozy. cozy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Several times when I was bowling out that section, I've seen it. It's always in a specific aisle, the basket aisle. Oh, baskets. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Love a basket. <laughs> the first time it was hiding behind the end cap and leaned into the aisle and looked at me. I ran. Oh. I almost burst into tears and began bowling that section into carts from that point on. The second time I convinced myself that it was just a trick of the eyes and switched back to bowling in the aisle because basket boxes can be quite large. I was sliding a big box along the floor and looked up. The damn thing was standing on right side of the aisle like it was shopping for damn baskets. I, I at first thought it was a customer until I registered that it was well past midnight. Oh, no. I got the hell out of Dodge and went back to bowling in baskets. I thought it was all in my head, and I'll admit I feel a little crazy for believing there was a ghost in A Block. Until I noticed my domestics alternate bowling in carts, too, away from the aisles. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. I love that. That's so funny. Yep. <laughs> Last one. Uh -huh. It was a slow Friday night. I was covering the operator's break. There were no guests around, and I decided to check my email. I was standing by the fitting rooms on my phone, and all of a sudden, one of the fitting room doors slam shut. I about peed myself. <laughs> <laughs> I walk over to the room and push it open, and no one is in there. I turn around to walk back to the desk and I hear really loud breathing. Oh, no, I don't like that. I don't like that. Nope. This really freaks me out. And I gasp really loud and look around. Nothing. I called a coworker over to keep me company till the operator came back from her break. I've worked here for two years and have never experienced anything like this before. <laughs> Super creepy. Uh, I don't like the breathing. No, That's I don't want the breathing. breathing. I don't That's like that spooky. one. No. <laughs> Cause that you can't really explain. Like there's nobody around you. Yeah. And breathing's a living situation. Yeah. So it's like, who the hell is breathing? So <laughs> that would scare me. So that's so it. I was so happy you did. Look at the <laughs> smile on my face. I told you you I love know. it. So I was a little bit down this morning because, well, I told you guys my chicken yes. story and then they were there. But, you know, this brought so much holiday cheer Yay! for me. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm so glad I could cheer you up with ghost stories. Yeah. <laughs> As you guys go out and do your Christmas shopping, if you guys encounter any ghosts, we want to know. Yes, please. You can please. email us at theominousstitch at gmail.com. You can also comment on any of our social media pages. We love seeing your comments. We often write back to you. Or if not, at the very least, we definitely give little hearts. And then we text each other. And we're like, look, we got a comment. We get so excited. <laughs> So leave a comment today because we want to hear from you. You can also go over to podbean.com and check out any show notes. Go there. See these crazy videos that Nicole sent me or what, have me watch with her today or see any other show notes from any show we've done in the past. There's also a little button you can click on. You guys know the drill. It's up in the upper right hand corner if you're on your computer or a little red button on your phone if you're listening on your phone. Become a patron today. Please, Join yay. our little patron army. We love our patrons. We do. We do send you stuff, we even do. though I'm a little bit late <laughs> on it, but we do send You'll you stuff. You'll get it. We you promise. get it. And we give you, like, guys, shout outs. We love to interact with you. We love to connect with you. It also really does make a difference in whether or not we can do this show for you guys. So, show, I called it a show. <laughs> yeah. Cute. It is a show. We can do this little podcast for you guys. So think about becoming a patron today. We love you. We love you. We love you even if you aren't a patron, but we love our stitches We love you very listening much. to us. Thank you. Oh, uh, this was such a good, uh, I'm so happy. Yay! This like made my day. I'm so happy. Uh, okay. Well, we have one more thing that we're going to do today. One more thing, which is actually really exciting, even though it's not related to story time. It's not related to story I promise time. I got some cool things about it. Okay. Well, I'm excited because like I have questions about this. Good. So this is going to be cool. So okay. it's movie time. Movie time. <laughs> This week's movie review, Deliver Us From Evil, released in 2014, IMDb rating of 6.2 stars, synopsis, 
New York police officer Ralph Sarchi investigates a series of crimes. He joins forces with an unconventional priest schooled in the rites of exorcism to combat the possessions that are terrorizing their city. Okay. Before we dive in. Yes. Do you know why I think this movie is kind of fun? No. Why? (laughs) (laughs) The movie itself had some good moments and some bad moments. But if you didn't know at the beginning... It mm-hmm. says it's inspired by the actual accounts of an NYPD sergeant. Right. Yes. So that's why, because it's based on a true story. Correct. That was my question. I'm like, how much of this is true? Okay, good. Okay. Good you ask. So Ralph Sarchi, they really did a lot of investigation with his his character. So him himself, that, yeah. the way that he senses some evil things. And that's things true. Like that, all of that is true. And they even tried to get his character very much like him. Oh, that's cool. So that's good. What you see of Ralph Sarchi is the real Ralph Sarchi. Okay. And it doesn't hurt that he is Eric Bana yes. because he's very handsome. Oh, <laughs> and he does pretty good with his NY, his New York his accent. accent. Yeah. yeah. You, can, really you can hear his like Australian, Australian yeah. kick in every once in a while. But yeah. he does great. So that is, that's a fact. Okay. Um, he did. He was an NYPD um, officer for a while doing those undercover things and doing all that with the live things. And mm-hmm. then he retired to become um, an exorcist, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So he was like in that field. Now, the thing was that whole movie, that whole story. No, that was definitely not true. OK. Yeah, because it's Cause... very outlandish. It's very for yeah. entertainment purposes. Okay. No, but um there was some moments. So uh, when his his head kind of popped, cracked open when they were doing the exorcism. Yeah. That actually happened in one of his. Ooh. Yeah. So that they wanted to put that in there. Oh. Um, the hearing of voices and, and things of other people. There's one of the episodes Oh, th- in the basement. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They found the dead body. Yeah. There were certain elements of that in one of his other cases. Oh, weird. Yeah. Okay. But everything else uh-huh. is not. Is all. Yes. Okay. Okay. But it's cool to that they really wanted to make a movie based on this guy's life. And he it says, I think he performed about 25 exorcisms Ooh. and made 200 house calls for exorcisms. Oh, wow. So that's exciting. Yeah. So he was really involved and that was really cool. Yeah. Oh, and the, and the priest. Yes. Yeah. Which was the like- priest is cool. So how much of, of that is true? Cause, okay. <laughs> hold on. My dog is wagging and hitting the microphone. Hi, Rosie. You can hear her. I love she had to too. come give Nicole loves. Yeah. You should and speak. I think also come hang out by the heater. Yeah. <laughs> Are you cold? Are you cold? It's okay. Okay. Oh, you got to move smiling. your tail. <laughs> Rosie, stop wagging. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's the his, priest. Yeah. The priest is like a very outlandish, but there were two specific priests that helped Ralph Sarchi. Okay. So because in the in the end credits, they mentioned Mendoza, right? Or is that his that's name? That's the name, but that's not. Yes. Yeah. So it's based off two real life religious figures, Bishop Robert McKenna and Father Malachi Martin. So these two were very big into exorcisms, too. You know what's crazy, though? Huh. Ralph also visited with Ed and Lorraine Warren. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, so they knew somebody that lived up down the... And so they, they worked together, too. Oh, cool. So there's some connections. Okay, okay, very but cool. the character in the movie, I love. Father but- Mendoza. I know, I loved him. <laughs> and so I thought it was like, oh, okay, so we're learning about Father Mendoza as well. And then they those two no. worked together. But you no. wish, yeah. I thought that was cool, but no. He was cool. I liked him. Yeah. So, um, but the movie movie yeah so they they took a whole elaborate different way of of the approach of this but the whole fact that they visited where were they they were in like a different country i don't even know the military people the oh they were in iraq iraq so yeah yeah they they stumbled upon like a devil worshiping place right yeah so they were in iraq they found this cave that they were i guess looking for people people the, you know the, yeah, to shoot the, enemies <laughs> enemies they were looking for the enemy yeah and then they go into this cave they go in a little deeper and then there's like a river of skulls a that river they of cross, skulls yeah. cross over and then they see the writing on the wall and then that the the lead guy gets all that scary face yeah he's like <laughs> creepy kind of looking zombified. yeah and then they follow him in i'm like Why aren't you, you guys like looking yeah. at his face <laughs> don't you think there's something wrong like 
why would you cross over a river of skulls? Like, get out. Yeah. Now, I know you have military training, but I feel like your instincts would kick in at some point. Seriously. And be like, There's something wrong with my buddy. Yeah. Let's we get out of get here. Out. Yeah. yeah. Instead of let's go further into the cave and cross <laughs> let's the go river explore. of skulls. Let's yeah. yeah. The creepy place. Obviously, if they didn't do that, we wouldn't have the premise for the movie. Exactly. But, you know. I don't know. It was spooky, though. Yeah, it was very spooky. But um, but yeah, it's cool. It follows, again, Ralph Sarchi. And and I love his friend. And I keep forgetting his name. He's from Seattle. Jo, uh, Joe McHale. Joe, Joe McHale. McHale. Yes, I love Joe McHale. Yes. He was good. He was so he's fun really good in, in this movie. Yeah, he's, he plays, was very fun. Yeah, he yeah. plays this macho New York cop who, like, uses knives to fight people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> was yeah, like, that was so cool. funny. But yeah, so they, it's just like Ralph Sarchi and his like undercover things and they investigate. My only problem when they would do these things, they were by themselves a lot. Yeah. You'd think that there would be backup on a lot of them, right? Like when they're dangerous situations. Yes. yes. They, I feel like they would call for backup. Yeah. But no, they were like, yeah. it's so movie macho. Like, yeah. let's take everything let's take, on yeah, our own. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I thought that was a little bit ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but Ralph, ba- uh, yeah, Banna, Eric Banna, Eric Banna. Eric Banna. I'm, I'm getting those names. Ralph Banna, yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I switched them up with the other. But he did great. It yeah. was fun, right? Yeah, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I enjoyed the movie, and yeah. the possessions and the, the spookiness Yeah, that it. was very spooky. It was the very, lady. Yeah, she was very scary. I didn't like, yeah, so if you watch this movie, there's a wife that, like, throws her baby into a lion pit. Yeah. She she's sacrifices like, her kid to the lion. Yeah. Cause yeah. she's a, like possessed. She gets a Yeah. She gets possessed. There's a, there's a demon that, um, they pick up in Iraq. We right. kind of mentioned that. And her husband and two of his other army buddies kind of are coming back. And one of them is possessed. The other two get influenced by him and then become possessed. possessed. You guys will. you watch it. Makes it. Sense it all it. ties together. But it was a good movie. I enjoyed Yay, it. Really yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. It, it didn't <laughs> great, get great box office reviews. But um, the fact that it's just based on somebody's true like experience mm-hmm. i think that's so cool yeah and oh um what's her name his wife i gotta look this up i keep saying what's it what's she her name she just had a baby olivia munn that's right she, yeah olivia she, munn. she has her little new york accent i know too. it's so cute i love her i i've she's always cute, loved huh? olivia munn yeah she's very funny she's very smart yes. everything every time i see her on a show i'm like oh i love her i love so, her yeah. now fun fact did you recognize the little girl? Oh, oh, oh. Yes, the daughter. Um, uh, What was her name? Christina or something. Christina. Uh, she looked familiar, but I'm not sure. Okay. I don't know who she was. I thought she was someone else. Well, she's in The Haunting of Hill House. Um, oh, I She's in a lot that. of spooky things. Oh. And that's what I recognized her from. So, anyway. It was so fun. Yay. Yeah. How many stitches would you give it? Uh, I'd give it a, a six and a half seven maybe almost a seven yeah. yeah i would say it's like a seven yeah. for me There's yeah a it's, lot in of that, it's in that it's in that seven but... seven genre where like <laughs> I en- seven genre se- I yeah i mean i enjoyed it yeah. i like the actors it was well acted it was yeah. fun it was funny um father mendoza is in a, a tv show called florida man have oh, you seen that no it's it's real. it's a really fun uh, fun show but okay. um, basically he plays a cop oh that oh, that's uh, fun. goes down to Florida because there's like a whole thing with um, a gold coin and, and they're trying to find this buried treasure and okay. but it's he's connected to this mob guy and then they all go down to Florida you'll have to <laughs> it's it's a whole involved thing is he but good in it he's very good in it so when I, I saw him on the stage I was, this movie. he's very I was he's, like yeah oh, he's hey. a good looking man yeah but um so yeah I, I enjoyed him too good so all the actors are great I love any I love Joel McHale and I yes. thought it was awesome and hilarious that he was doing a a horror movie because <laughs> yes. I'm like, what are you doing, Joel? Yeah, he's usually comedies. Yeah, but, yeah, nope. yeah. So I'm like, you're on the friend. soup. What are you yeah. doing? <laughs> yeah, no, good movie. And I can yeah. stitch to it here and there. And mm-hmm. I have to look up for certain moments. But yep. it's a fun movie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and it's on Netflix. It's on Netflix. So if you've got Netflix, yep. go check it out. Yep. Go watch it. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the end of this amazing episode. Yay! Happy holiday season. And until next time, we'll see you, Stitchers. See you, Stitchers. Oh.